Yo, what's poppin' everybody? Welcome back to the podcast on the episode of Caffeine and Green with your man, Connor Cardenas. And before we get into it today, I wanted to give a huge shout out and thank you to all of my homies over at Steel Mill Coffee in Oceanside, California. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have an amazing facility to do the podcast in. So thank you, Anna, Giles, Lil C, Riley, and of course, y'all know him, Shea Cooper. And if you're ever in Oceanside, cruise by, grab a cup of coffee, and say what up to all the homies. Also, if you guys haven't already, head over to www.caffeineandgreenroasting.com today to check out that Southside coffee from my homegirl, Tyler Schaefer. It's cherry. It's chocolatey. It's had a little bit of caramel, too. And also, the new Victory Lap coffee inspired by Leof Clockley. And of course, last but not least, the Issa Blend, which is dark, chocolate, and bold, and it is amazing. So if you head over to caffeineandgreenroasting.com today, you can grab those coffees. My guest today is a young strapping individual by the name of Manuel Medina, a.k.a. the Pretty Mexican. He is a pro fighter for LFA, the Legacy Fighting Alliance, and he's been one of my training partners for over the last year in jiu-jitsu and striking, and he's just a hilarious individual, an awesome guy, and I wanted to have him on to talk about, you know, what it's been like just becoming a pro fighter and what he's dealing with while he's doing that, and of course girl problems (laughs) so without further ado my my man my g the pretty mexican manuel medina this is your time to shine homie let's go and we are live okay this is this is what i was telling you about right here there you go. <laughs> every time. Every time. I never, like, sometimes I remember, and then sometimes I don't, and it really, it's like, ah. Oh. Or, like, somebody will pop it literally right before I start it. I'm like, bro, <laughs> fuck, you should have got that right there. And, you know, I'm trying to try not to drink as much beer, so I got this, uh. Seltzer. Seltzer yeah, thing, kinda... but it's, like, stronger than a beer. So. A little basic. <laughs> you know, I, a little basic is a shout-out to uh, Cass and Leov. They helped me, uh. They introduced me to these things. Oh, nice. <laughs> back, like back in like the height of COVID during summer and shit, like we would get those and then we'd go like sit on a cast. Uh, you, you sugar mama. Nary? Not cast. No. <laughs> Nary? Nary? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who? <clears throat> Cass, um, Cass. Uh, Leov's roommate. Oh, Cass. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah so, she's kind of cute. <laughs> No comment, no. <laughs> but she uh, she has like a boat, and we'd go sit out there and like drink these, and then like paddle nice. around the like paddle around the bay on this like blow up stand up board or something. Oh, like that. sick! It was fucking gangster. <laughs> uh, anyway, sorry, we didn't even introduce you, Manuel Medina, the pretty Mexican. Welcome to Caffeine and Green. Sir. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me, brother. Yes, dude, and like for people who don't know you, um, you are a professional fighter. Yes, for LFA. Yes, which is uh, uh something alliance. Associ- wait, wait, what was it? It's um. Legacy Fighting Alliance. Yes. Yes. Jesus, I, I didn't even know. You didn't? <laughs> I didn't. Dude. <laughs> Every time I fight, oh, I'm fighting LFA. That's it. That's all I say. So I'm like, all right. But. I mean, it's it's a lot easier to say. Right. LFA. Yeah. Just throw an acronym <laughs> out there. You're totally fine. Um, but I mean, that, I mean, I've known you for oh, over a year now. Over a year. Over yes. a year. And we've trained together. I helped you train. I was one of your sparring partners for, for your my fight. last fight for, yeah. my, for my pro debut. Yeah. You're one of them. Yes. Dude. I remember that. Jesus crazy. I was actually going to post a photo today of, uh, one of the sessions that we had when you yeah. gave me that shiner. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. <laughs> no, dude, I totally love that. And I, I'm not even gonna lie. When you hit me, I like heard like like, a, like somebody rung my bell, bro. I was like, "Oh shit!" Like, Jesus, super loud. Well, you were wide open. I was like, "Okay, I, I needed you know, give it a little, little t- love tap." So, dude, I didn't even see it coming. That's what was crazy. It's because you were <laughs> on your back, and I yeah. was from top. I remember that. And I was trying to pass your guard, and I just was like focused on your body and did not see the hand just clack. Yeah, you were focusing on passing my guard, and then I was just like, "Okay, bam!" That's it. I learned from that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. That was a plan. Dude, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, that was so crazy. Dude, that was like, we were doing, our, we were doing back-to-back rounds because it was yes. me, you, and your brother. Yes, yeah, so I remember it was like Monday, it was only jiu-jitsu, and then it was uh, Tuesdays, Tuesday, Thursdays, it was jiu-jitsu and MMA. So that was like the sparring, like MMA sparring that we had. Um, yeah. That was when I was getting ready for my fight. My brother as well, but he couldn't fight, they couldn't find, find him an opponent, so, you know. But um, yeah, I remember that crazy days, Dude. right? 
That was like it would go five hundred MMA round with you, yes, and then yes. your brother would come in. Yeah, and then it would then I would go against your brother. Right. Yeah. Dude, what? It the was crazy. Fuck? Yeah, that was, and that was over. That was no, not not even a year. That was in um August. Um, yeah, August. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was it was like in summertime. Yeah, yeah. Because we were August. doing it late. It was like five, six o'clock, seven o'clock yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because we had two sessions. One, it was in the morning, like mm -hmm. 9 a.m. or 8 a.m., something like that. I don't really remember. Like Nogi. Yeah, and Nogi. Striking. And then at night, when it was with, like, Hannah and Perry, it was, like, 5 p.m. There was another session, like, Wednesdays or Tuesdays, something like that. Dude, that's right. Hannah was there. Yeah. I yeah. totally Hannah totally was there. forgot Hannah was there. Yeah, Hannah was there. Damn. <laughs> Shout out to Hannah. Yeah. Yo, that was tough. Yeah, those – that dude, summer was – well, let's talk about it. I mean, like, so – when we met a year ago, you had literally just got your belt. Because what was that belt for? It was for the California State Champion uh, for, Championship for Muay Thai. For Muay Thai, yes. And that you, was. Um, go ahead, sorry. So, going to the fight, um, I was working on a line uh, in an uh, island. Um, I don't know if you remember that. I think I barely met you. So it was uh, Sun, uh, San Nicolas Island. It's like a Navy base and stuff. Oh, really? And that's when everything started, right? Like with COVID starting and stuff. So I got COVID. I didn't. I didn't know that I had COVID. And the island was cold as hell, like really freaking cold. And uh, I remember I was sick and I was training. I was still training, like doing my sprints and stuff. I wanted to pull out of the fight um, because what? I was like, one, all the time, right? This is what happens to me all the time when I want to fight. Um, two weeks, three weeks before the fight, I start getting like really nervous and like I'm scared, but not, not like scared, scared. You know, it's just like good scared. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I should like break my 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 ankle or something, just crazy thoughts that you get, yeah, you know, because yeah, yeah. you want to pull out of the fight. Yes, yeah. you want to pull out of the fight. You're like, okay, I don't want to fight. And uh, that was one of my excuses. I used to call Johnny's like every night. I was like, I was in an island and I was like, dude, like, I'm not feeling good. Like, I wasn't feeling good, actually. Like, yeah, yeah. I had the COVID. Like, that was my first time that I had it. I didn't know. And, you know, the first time you get it, it's like really, really tough. Mm -hmm. I had it for like a week. Like, my body was hurting. I, I had like headaches and stuff. Um, wait, wait, so you for sure know you had COVID or was it just like a oh, head no, cold? For sure. I had COVID, oh, yeah, shit. but I didn't know it was COVID, okay. you know? Okay. I didn't know all the symptoms. It was when we barely started. And um, and I remember I fought with COVID. I, had, I was sick. What? I was sick during the fight. Dude, no way. Just Johnny didn't believe me. I was like, dude, like, I'm <laughs> feeling like shit. Like, yeah. dude, I was drinking everything. Like, but you missing. Were, what was your weight cut? My weight cut wasn't pretty hard. Mm. Bro, it could have been the weight cut. No, it was pretty hard. No, yeah. no, because... I wasn't cutting weight at the island. Okay. At the island, I was fine. Okay. I was cutting weight four days before the fight. So when I was at the hotel. Oh, Jesus. That's when I was cutting weight. And I remember it was crazy weight cut. I like was like, that's a crash course weight cut. Oh, my right? God. I was like crying. Johnny goes like, he was like, oh, stop being a pussy. Like, you're fine. <laughs> coach. You're going to be fine. And I'm like, dude, like, I was getting mad at coach. I was like, dude, like, what the fuck? You always, get, you always give me shit when I'm cutting weight. Like, you know, you don't, you might not even know how it feels. I know how he knows how it feels. But of like, course. at the moment, I was like, fuck like i'm feeling bad you know yeah, yeah like yeah. you drink hydrated you want to drink water fuck you're, you're not even hungry yeah the f last two three days you're like drink, uh, just thinking about water because you're like cutting your water and you're, you're still training running and all this stuff you can only drink like glass two glasses of uh, water a day that's for the last day or two and are you are you just strictly doing cardio? Are you lifting weights? What are you are you like actually sparring? What are you doing for the for the last week? Uh, I'm just focusing on cutting the weight. If I have to cut the weight, mm -hmm. if I'm like close to the weight, I focus more on uh, more on uh, technique. Like, what am I gonna do? But we focus on everything during the camp, so it, we yeah. always have like a, like um, two months to like prepare it, mm -hmm. two to three months. So yes, uh, I don't really do weights. I suck at doing weights, um, which I need to do. Not weight lifting, like getting buff and stuff. No, like strength condition mm -hmm. and all the stuff that involves like weights and stuff. I don't really do that. I do more of a cardio. I focus my, more on my cardio, my technique, and what I'm gonna do during the fight. Uh, I try to watch the my opponents, my opponents' fights and stuff to see how he fights. You know, um, to get a plan before the fight. So once we get to the fight, we're like, you know, we're set. We know what to do. Um, but yeah, basically I just focus on, I just focus on cardio and technique. That's, that's about it. Not really w lifting weights. That's not my thing. And it's been working for me. So, you know, yeah, I do. If you were to like move up in a weight class, you would obviously probably start like lifting weights and shit like that. Yeah, right? for sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Yeah. That's something I would do. Actually right now I'm pretty low on weight. Um, I need to pump some weight. I need to gain some weight. Um, cause I'm like 
130, 132, and I fought a 125. So that's way too close to my weight class. These guys that I'm fighting, they cut from 145, 150. Mm-hmm. So the next day, they would fight. They're like 150, 145, and I'm like 135. You know what I mean? Because oh. you lose water weight. So basically, <laughs> what you lose the day before or the day of the weigh-ins, it's most uh, it's uh, water weight. And then you get to eat and you do hydrate and all this stuff. Um, but when I do that, the max I get is to 135. 136. They go back to like 145, 140. So they're heavier than me during the fight, and that yeah. like could affect me. You know, the last guy that I fought, he 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 uh he used to fight at 135. So he cut down to 125. So the next day, the day of the fight, he was I think he was like 150, 150 something. Dude, he, he looked pretty. Fl- yeah, he looked big. He was strong. He was big. He yeah. he's not in, in another level. You know, mm-hmm. um, but, you know I don't give a fuck. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. Yeah, no, no, no. It was, uh, but you held your own, which was crazy. Oh, uh, you know, he got into my head. That's it. Really? I'm going to be honest with you. That's the reason I think I lost. So, uh, going into this fight, first of all, it was, I got a 10 day camp, right? It was a short notice fight. And uh, once they told me, they're like, hey, you know, you know what? We have an opponent for you. Do um, you want to take it? Yes or not? And I was like, you know what? Uh, let me think about it. They're like, no, you, you don't have time. Like, it's, it's like the 28th. And it was like August 18th or 16th, something like that. So I had like literally 10 days. And I was like, you know what? Let's take it. I talked to coach and he was like, yeah, no, you can, you can fuck this guy up. And he's confident. I was confident at first until I was like hurting stuff about this guy. Like he's a Golden Globe champion. He's a. Uh, Is he really? He, oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, he's a Muay Thai champion as well. He's uh, number six or number seven ranked in uh, wrestling in the state, like in Arizona. Um, he's a world. He's a brown belt, almost a black belt in jiu-jitsu, world champion, some some shit like that. So he was well-rounded. When I heard a lot of stuff, I was like, fuck. Like, I'm going to get my ass beat. Yeah. But, you know, I was like, my coach is confident about this fight. I'm confident I'm on my striking. Um, I know if he takes me to the ground, I'm going to get beat up. I know that for sure. But, you know, I was just confident. I was like, ah, I want to – and I wanted to fight. I mean, I was getting ready for an amateur fight. That was, That's another thing. I was getting for an amateur fight, which is two minutes, two minutes per, per round, right? Professional, it's five minutes. So to prepare in 10 days for a five-minute round, it was crazy. Like, I was like, I, that was one of the things that got into my head as well. I thought I was going to gas out during the fight. But thank God, you know, first round I gassed out because I was nervous going into the fight. Second round, I was like, fine. I was going at it, and then he took me down. He fucked me up in the second round. Third round, I was like no, more like— No, that was like, first round. First and second round, he fucked me up. Well, uh, I have the second round. He he took me down again. Because you got one round. Because we watched the that fight. That was the like, third one. Was that the th- oh, third one? That's okay, when I was like yeah. confident. I was like, okay, his leg is fucked up. He yeah, couldn't shoot anymore. Yeah. He was trying to shoot, and I was like, I was just kicking and stuff. I was getting more comfortable. Um, but you know, shit happens. Um, once uh, once I saw him wobble with the when I kicked his uh, cap, I was like, oh shit, I got this guy. But it was too late. He already won the fight. Um. I'm pretty sure if I would I would have had like one one minute or one more round I would have taken the fight for sure. Because mm-hmm. after the fight he couldn't walk. After the fight he couldn't walk. Next day he couldn't walk, um, and I was fine. Just my face was my face was a little messed up. Other than that I was feeling good. I was just disappointed in myself because I knew that wasn't me going into the fight. That wasn't me. I know I have more more than that. I can do more than that. He was I was just nervous during the whole fight. Well, I mean, it's your first professional fight. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, got to give yourself, I mean, cut yourself a little bit of slack because, I mean, you were mopping, <clears throat> mopping people up when you're in your amateur career. Yes, you had like what nine belts or some shit. I have uh, right now. I have five belts, five belts, and one of them is the California State Championship. And um, I had one MMA fight actually, only one MMA, and I knocked the guy out in the third, third round. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, that was my first fight. He had like four, five fights. So he was a little more experienced than me. And he's he's a blue belt on jiu-jitsu. Oh, damn. Yeah. Okay. So when I fought that guy, I was barely, barely uh, learning jiu-jitsu. That was like my first month of jiu-jitsu. First month? First month. Oh, shit. Yeah. And Wait, did you wrestle, though? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You so back in high school, okay. I, I, I wrestled for two two years. So Not really two years, two seasons of the high school stuff. So it's like four months, mm-hmm. two months each uh, season. Yeah. That was it. But I mean, it helped a lot. Don't get me wrong. Like, two years is pretty, pretty all right. I, I'm getting a little better right now with um, coach uh, Justin Flores. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a great wrestling coach. Um, 
and all the rest, you know, the jiu-jitsu and stuff, gochanics, of course, my striking, you know, getting way better with them. So I think I have a really, really, really good um, coaches and people that surround me, so. Nice, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, co- co- coach, of course. And then now you're <clears throat> you're um, at Alliance? Is that where you're doing yeah, so your training? Yeah, tra- so I trained at, um, I trained at four different gyms. I trained at um, Alliance, um, Miramar. And then I train at uh, sometimes at Studio Five Forty, which is oh the, yeah, with, yeah, uh, Solana Beach. Yes, yeah. And then I go to uh, Alliance Carlsbad, and then UFC gym. Oh, two alliances. Two alliances, yeah. So oh, damn. They're basically the same thing, same same people, but different locations. So do you go to one or the other for specific things like one jujitsu, one striking, <laughs> one wrestling? For alliances, jujitsu. For both of the alliances, jujitsu. Okay. So Mondays I have. Um, 6 a.m. I have jiu-jitsu in uh, Miramar. Then after that, I go work for like an hour or so. Then I, I go to practice at uh, Carlsbad, uh, Alliance Carlsbad. And I do my, my wrestling there with uh, uh, Coach uh, Justin Flores. Mm-hmm. And then that's for Monday. Then I come back, work for another three, four hours maybe, um, go home, change, and then I go around Cows Mountain. I don't know if you know what yeah, that yeah, is. Yeah. I go around that for like twice. It depends how much time I have. Then go back, go back to my house, shower, work, and then after that I go back to like training, either boxing. That's like or every like, day. That's m- like almost every day. Yes, almost every day. Fuck. Yeah, dude, you're on a grind right now, you know, son. Try, trying, trying to get better, you know, trying to pursue the the dream, trying to be a UFC champion someday. So, is that where you want to go? Yeah, UFC, not like one championship, not. No, 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 no. 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 My goal is to go to the UFC and be a UFC champion. That's my goal. If anything changes, um, you know, just be a trainer, a coach. Um, What's your weight class right now? One twenty-five. So What's that I, called? Though? I think it's flyweight. 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 And they they have like a reemergence of the flyweight in UFC. Oh yeah, dude, yeah. it's crazy, dude. Okay, real quick, let's shift gears real quick. But I mean, we'll come. We'll definitely get back to you. But I wanted to ask you about this. What are your predictions for this weekend with McGregor Connor, and Connor, Poirier? Poirier, Connor, first round. Connor first round. Yeah. Again? Yeah. Did he knock him out in like 30 seconds the first time? I know. Remember that? Dude. It was crazy. Dude, I remember that fight. I remember that fight. That's how long I've been watching McGregor. And I was just like, dude, I don't know. Like, he it, Dustin Poirier got bigger too, but like so did McGregor. So it's like oh, yeah. it's not it's kind of, you know, you would only expect that they're gonna just run it back and it's gonna kind of be the same outcome because Yeah. Connor's definitely like on his like back on his grind he's oh like, yeah, yeah for he wasn't sure fucking up no more like he's not letting i mean maybe he is letting the fame go. <laughs> I, I don't know him personally but like uh he just looks like he's he's locked in right now yeah um i think that my girl has a way way better striking than than poirier uh, i think poirier is gonna try to take him down but my girl has been working hard i'm pretty sure he's gonna win again first round first or second round for sure knockout Knockout. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Do you think like a leg kick or he's going to do striking? They're just Striking, go like punches. Boxing. Like yeah. probably not uppercut or straight. One of the two. All uppercut or straight. That's what I'm praising right now. Dude. That would be so sick. I can't wait till that fight. But, dude, there's also – who else is fighting on that card? The card is pretty stacked like for this weekend. I forgot mm-hmm. who else is fighting. I don't remember who's fighting. Honestly, I haven't even checked. I just, I, I just know Margaret and Poirier, but I know the rest of them. Dude, that's all I want to see. That's it's gonna be it's gonna be a see. good weekend. It's gonna be fun, dude. Have you seen uh there? There's a Kiesa fight too. That that black guy that he's fighting. Kiesa against uh Gagne or Cagney or something. Yeah, that's gonna be a good fight, dude. That fight is gonna be gnarly. Yeah, like, I can't wait. Oh. I know Kiesa has good what jiu-jitsu and striking as well. He definitely well he moved up a weight class and then so now his he was like the weight cut. He's like I can't do it no more. And then he goes into like his first. I don't know if it was like 155 or 170, like one of those. Dude, his first one was like a submission. Oh, like wow. guillotine, like guillotine this dude. And it was just like, it's yo, because he's like healthy now. He hasn't fought in a long time, right? Or when was his no, last fight? No, I'm pretty fight? sure. I mean, it had to have been last year, at least. Has it? Yeah, yeah. He, he's fought last year for sure. But, dude, yeah, I don't know. I mean, is there are there any other fights that are coming up that you are like really excited about? The one that I want to watch again, if it happens, it's... uh. Moreno, I remember the on my white class, the USC my white class, Moreno against uh, Figueroa or Figueroa, oh, something, yeah, something like the that. New the guy Brazilian from guy against yeah. the Mexican guy. Mm-hmm. Dude, that was a crazy fight. 
Dude, he barely won it too, right? Like barely. I thought the Mexican won. That's right. I was sitting right next to you when we watched that yeah, fight. Yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, we were there. Remember that? that uh, Red Hefe's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, dude, dude that like, was crazy. We, I, I thought us Mexicans were gonna make history. <laughs> that was gonna be the first me- Mexican like champion. Like, we have like Cain Velasquez, but he's not really Mexican. Okay. Um, people say that he's Mexican. I think he's like half Mexican or something like that. He does. She can barely speak Spanish. Okay. So, um, I'm talking about born and raised in Mexico. Like yes. Mexican, Mexican. Okay. Um, but we didn't, you know. It's all right. It is what it is. We'll it come is back. what it is. Wait, what, what about Henry Cejudo, though? Isn't he Mexican? He he was born here as well. Oh, oh. So and he can, he's he needs to be from the roots, though. Yeah, from the roots. He like, yeah, yeah, the like, roots, son. In Mexico, you know? <laughs> like uh, Jair, you know Jair? The guy that fought uh, Jeremy Stevens? Yes, yes. That guy, he's he's full Mexican, like full, full Mexican. From there. From Mexico, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm not saying from like Mexico City, but I'm I'm just yeah, like no, from I mean, the country like from, from the country Mexico. Yeah, 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 you know what yeah, yeah. I mean? No, I got yeah. you. I got you. No so, worries. Stay less. <laughs> stay stay less. less. <laughs> as a, as a half Mexican who barely speaks Spanish and is born here, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you Mexican? Half yeah, Mexican? Bro. No way. Cano Alonso Cardenas. What? <laughs> that is the fucking name, dude. dude That's I got, crazy. I got my 23 and me, and it was um 40 no 51 percent Native American from Jalisco. That's where my family's from. And then uh, 49% Irish. Oh, wow. So I'm like, what, 2% more fucking Mexican than I am? I'm like right down the middle. So like, cannot miss it. So, yeah, I don't, it's, it's funny. It's like when I got the 23 and me back, it, like, it had two maps, yeah? Like, here's Mexico. And it was like Jalisco. And that was it. There's the whole country. <laughs> that was it. That's like, this is where you're from, G. And then he look at the Irish, the, the map of Ireland, and it was like chicken pox. It's like my DNA is all over, all that over bitch. the place. Yeah, like, you know, my my mom's side of the family, just that Irish side, they like to be promiscuous. Good. <laughs> <laughs> nice, dude. So that's that's basically what I found out. But um, like yeah, no, we definitely didn't. Like my, my dad's first language is Spanish. Like he was born here though too. Oh, nice. Um, it wasn't till. We're third generation because my grandma was born here too, but again, within a small town in Texas, and they only spoke Spanish for a long time. It was my um, it was my great grandmother and my great grandfather. They came from um, my great grandmother was a Native American, like an Indian, like wow. straight up Indian, and then uh, my great grandfather came from Spain and he settled, settled in Veracruz, and then oh, like wow. our family made its way over that way. That's crazy, dude. Super crazy, but. They, my dad and my grandmother told, like, my grandmother told my, um, like, my all my uncles and shit, all my yeah. tios, basically, like, not to speak Spanish because, like, they would get beat in school. What? Dude, super gnarly. Like, my dad would tell me stories of, like, him and my uncle Rogelio, when they would, uh, they would, like, switch them out. So, like, my dad would be sitting in the room looking at my uncle getting beat with, like, a ruler or, like, whatever for speaking Spanish. And they were like, you need to learn English. Really? Yeah, and then they would like switch them out, and like my uncle would go in, and my dad would be out there, and like they'd make them watch. Like, yeah, it was fucking weird. And because I was like, "Why aren't you ever teach teach us Spanish?" Like, we didn't want to speak Spanish. Like, we want to speak English. Like, learning English is like what you need to do. Well, why though? I don't know. Like, it didn't make sense to me. Like at the school, whatever. But they spoke Spanish at home, right? And then eventually, like my uncles, like because there's seven of them. Like, uh, I think like the first three or four, like my dad is the second oldest. So it's like the first one, my dad, and then my two other uncles, I think they all spoke Spanish. My dad sp- still speaks Spanish. So does my, fir- like the oldest, but I, dude, I swear to God, I think like the other five don't even speak like a lick. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like at all. My cousin, my one cousin, uh, Orlandito, he speaks fluent Spanish. His, his mom is from Sinaloa. So she married into our family, and she's like, "No, you're speaking Spanish." Like, so he yeah, super fluent. Like, right? Yeah, d- that's what it's matter. supposed to be. Like, you 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 learn Spanish in your house, and then when you go to school, like you're learning English. Yeah, either exactly. way, you, learn, you, you have to learn English if you live here. Well, dude, yeah, I mean, it's like I think he actually can speak like complex Spanish too, because he's been like born with it. Nice. Like I remember when like he used to, because he's fuck, dude, he's about to graduate college, or he did, he did, but he's like probably your age. Like 21, 22. And he, dude, can just switch back and forth like so easy. And I'm just like, damn, bro. That is crazy. So even though my English is not the best, um, a lot of words I, I just learned them on, on English. 
Mm-hmm. So when I go to work, um, I'm a coach. So when I'm coaching and stuff, there's people sometimes that they come and they only want to speak Spanish. But for example, I'm trying to like explain how to throw punches and stuff, and I already know how to explain it in English. Mm-hmm. So when I try to like explain in Spanish, I can't. I like, I don't know why. I, like, really? I can't fucking say it in Spanish. And they're like, "Oh my god, you're so fucking whitewashed." And I'm like, "No, dude. Like, I just can't." Sometimes what? I forget the, the words in Spanish. It sounds stupid oh. because I'm Mexican, and my, my you can notice in my English I have an accent and stuff. So it's like you can notice that I'm fucking Mexican. But sometimes I just can't. I just Did can't you, fucking explain you, how to do it. You grew up speaking Spanish as your first language? Yeah, I just, uh, so when I moved here, what was that? 2015, at the end of 2015, that was um, August, November 8th, November 8th. That's when I first moved here, like th- when I was here. November uh, 8th of 2015? 2015. Dude, November 8th of last year was my first day of jujitsu. Like no specifically, way. like I remember that day. That was the first class <laughs> I ever took. November eighth, for sick. <laughs> but sorry, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so I moved here on uh, November eighth, uh, twenty fifteen. From Mexico. From Mexico. From TJ. Yes. From TJ. From TJ. Well, I crazy. I was living in. Uh, I was born in Querétaro. I don't know where that is. No. Like south. No, south. Say it again. Say it again for me. Though. Querétaro. 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 Okay. Yeah, I was there with my parents for. I was born there for about since I was like since I was born to like seven and then we moved to Morelia, Michoacan or Michoacan. I don't know. If you remember Michoacan. Right. Yeah. Michoacan. Yeah. I was there for about so seven, two, 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 three years. And then I moved to uh, Cuernavaca, like close to like Mexico city, Cuernavaca for about, I don't know, four months. And then yeah. I moved back to uh, Cuer- uh, Morelia, like Michoacan. And then um, I stayed there for another Two years, I guess, and then one time on the um, where we're gonna come to uh, Christmas, to um, TJ because that's where my family w- uh, was at the time, and uh, we just stayed. We stayed there. We were like, okay, you guys are gonna stay here. And I was like, oh shit. At the time, I had a girlfriend in um, in uh, Morelia, right? <laughs> Dude, I was so sad. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> And since that moment, I haven't had a girlfriend. Stop like, it, dude. We need to get into that Jesus. for sure. But oh I don't want to. I don't want to digress about you. You fucking. <laughs> <laughs> so I yeah. Can't even right now. With I that. was so fucking sad, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then from TJ, we moved to uh, here, San Diego. Yeah, it was crazy, crazy stories. In 2015. 2015. No, from uh, TJ. September 8th, 2015. I moved to TJ. So November 8th. November 8th. Yeah, November 8th. September. You September, said September. 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 Oh, okay. Okay. September. 8th. September. Yeah. September. Five. September. September. Yeah. 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 Okay. September eighth. Okay. Of twenty fifteen. We and moved then here. you haven't gone back. No, I actually can't go back. You can't go back. I can't go back. Even though I have my my residence and stuff, my, I'm a permanent resident here. I can't go back. I can go anywhere else if I want, like anywhere else, anywhere in the world, but Mexico. What the? F- why? Yeah. So it's a crazy story. Um. Long story as well. So okay. here's the thing. When I was in Querétaro, where I was born, I was still with my parents. Me and my, my, my siblings and I we were there. Um, so my parents, they used to work for uh, the cartel, you know, cartel. Um, they were, uh, they, were, they used to do like money laundering, all this stuff. Um, there was one time they, owed, my, my, my dad, he was, he was in jail since I, since I was born. I didn't meet my dad. Well, I did meet him. Uh, we used to go to like, his work, my mom was like, oh, we're going to go see your dad at uh, uh, his work. I didn't know it was a jail. So we used to go get through all this fucking security. I used to get all naked. It was, they, fuck, it was crazy. They used to check you me made you everything. get naked? Yeah, yeah. They used, they, they as a kid? Us, as a kid. Everyone. They had to, like, get naked so you can go in and watch them. But I didn't know. I was like, oh, fucking weird ass Jeff. Um, he was there, and then when I was eight, he got out of prison. Right? Um... We moved to um, some place in Querétaro. Like it was, it was a pretty nice place, right? Um, I didn't know they were involved with cartel. I didn't know anything of this. I was, I was a kid. I found out when I was a little older. When I, when I uh, lived with my grandma and stuff. Anyways, uh, I was in Querétaro, and then we had to move to Michoacan, and there was a, this time, right? Um, my dad got drunk and stuff. He called my aunt. She lives here. Her name is uh, Selene. And he called her, and he was like, hey, you know what? I'm just calling to say, like, bye. I just want to say bye. You know, I love you guys, and take care of my, my children. That's basically what he said. And then my aunt was like, no, nah, like, stop saying stupid stuff. Like, you're, you'll be back. You'll be back. You're going to be fine. Um, 
Uh, and so there was one day, it was, what was that? Fuck. I remember if it was September. I think it was September as well. Fuck. September. September's a heavy month for September. you, bro. Yeah, it was crazy. I was eight at the time, right? They they went to, um, I don't want to say the place, but they went to somewhere else in, in um, Mexico Yeah. Uh, to pay this guy. I don't know who the fuck the guy was. Um, they were just going to pay him some money that they owed. And my dad didn't want my mom to go with him. But anyways, she was like insisting. She was like, oh, no, like I want to go. I didn't know the, uh, when I was a kid. I was like, oh, they just fucking going for merch because we were supposed to sell um, clothes. Like that was our job, my my dad's job supposedly, but it was a fucking lie. Um, and there was on Sunday. I remember it was a Sunday Sunday night. Uh, we were with the babysitter, right? And um, my my mom called and uh, she was like. She was talking to everybody. He was like, hey, how you guys doing, blah, blah. And we were like, oh, we're fine. Just like Chucha, which was the the, the babysitter, she was like, uh, she, didn't, she didn't want to buy uh, milk. And I told her, mom, I was like, oh, she doesn't want to buy milk. I don't want to drink milk, blah, blah, <laughs> Stupid stuff. I was, I was <laughs> Slow fucking, kid shit, yeah. I was a fucking kid. And then I was like, I was being a fucking snitch. I was like, oh, she's only on the couch eating all the food and all this stuff. <laughs> and I was like, anyways. Uh, the last person my mom talked to it was with my sister. Uh, she basically told her she was like, "Hey, you know what? I, I love you guys. Um, I love and I love you guys. And uh, take care of your siblings." That was it. That was the last time we talked to my. And here's the thing. So a day before they left, my my dad picked me up from school, and I bought some uh, churros, like 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 chips with like salsa and stuff. But I didn't eat, like, food. So he was like, hey, let me see that. Let me try them out. And then he ate them all. And I got super fucking mad. The reason he ate them all because he wanted me to eat food first and then eat my fucking, you know, as a kid, you want to eat yeah. fucking candy and chips? So that was it, right? He ate them all. And when I used to get mad when I was a kid, I wouldn't talk to anybody. I would just stay still, didn't talk to anybody for, like, days, right? For days? For days. Like, I would walk around and do all my stuff, but I wouldn't talk to, like, the person I was mad with. Oh, damn. That was the day before they left. The day they left, I didn't say goodbye to my dad. Yeah, uh, I didn't say goodbye to my dad. When they called, my mom was like, on Sunday night, he was like, uh, she was like, um, do you want to talk to your dad? And I was like, no, fuck that, right? And I never said goodbye to my dad, man. Yeah. Fuck. Um, so to anyone who's listening to this, don't ever, ever go to sleep without talking to your dad or mom or saying how, how much you love them. or don't go, don't go to bed mad, you know? You're going to regret it if something happens to them. I regret it to this moment. Fuck, man. You're going to make me cry. Oh, like, man. Yo, no, like, that hella, it. like, yo, that hella, like, oh, man. That's yeah. Like, it, that's a lot, bro. It was crazy. And I never said bye to him. I never said, I never hugged him. I never, anything. Fuck, man. You're going to need a minute, bro. Like, you got me all teary out right now. Fuck. Yeah. So it was like, like yo, that's heavy. <laughs> that's yeah, so it was heavy. crazy. So, did your that, brother talk to him? Your brother yeah, and your he sister did. talked to him? Yeah, they did. They both did. But stupid Manuel didn't, you know? Are you the oldest? No, I'm the one in the middle. You're the middle. I'm the middle. Going back to everything. So um, the cartel was looking for, for us, for my siblings and I, right? But my grandparents, my mom's, from my mom's side, they picked us up. They took care of us. And even in Morelia, when we were living with them, um, the cartel was looking for us. They were like, oh, we're, we're looking for your dad, for Manuel. I'm her friend, his friend, whatever. And uh turns out it was like the cartel. And then the police... um PGJ, which it'll be like FBI, I guess you could say here. Yeah. Something like that. Like a higher intelligence yeah, service. Yeah, like they're they were, higher than the police. Yeah, they were. She, uh, there was an old lady, old lady that came. And she was asking, asking for like water and stuff. And then she came in. And then when she left, there was like police trucks like waiting for her. And then she just changed quickly. And she was. She, we turn, turns out she was a police. So she, they were looking for my dad and my mom. Um, but at the time, they were already dead. I guess. I honestly. I don't know what happened to them. I know they got kicked up, and but I, I don't know if they killed them or something. I'm, that's what we think. You know, they got killed. So, fuck, bro. So from from uh, Morelia, um, we decided to move to uh, to uh, TJ. That's where all my family was, like my my uncles, my aunt, and stuff. And they had more money, so they could take care of us. Cause my grandma, you know, she was old and stuff. Um, so it was tough for her. We had to like sell clothes and stuff like food fruit and stuff to like survive um so we moved here in tj and then even in tj they came to look for us as well 
right? So they came, they came all the way to TJ. They were asking for the house. So we were at my uh, my uncle's house, and they were like, "Oh, is this house for sale?" And we're like, "No, there's no fucking sign. Like, it's not for sale." And it was only when there was nobody in the house but us, like my my brother and I. And uh, they came like three times. That's when they, we knew that it was them. And uh, that's when we decided, like, okay, we had to, we have to move. My 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 uncles, Irwin took the decision. They're like, okay, we gotta move the kids out of fucking Mexico. Then that's basically I'm a fucking refugee here in uh, the USA. God bless America, G. Yeah, <laughs> dude. <laughs> yeah, shout out to America. Yo, shout out to America, <laughs> dude. That's so scary, bro. Like- yeah, so that's 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 actually the reason I'm here. Um. But thank God for that, you know, even though it's sad what happened to my parents and what happened to us and everything we went through <clears throat> and all this stuff, um, I'm happy for that, you know, because if that wouldn't have happened, I don't know what, what I would be doing right now, like at this yeah. moment, if my parents would be still alive. I don't know if I would be like, I don't know, selling drugs or doing all this crazy shit. Dude, you could not sell drugs, bro. I love you to yeah. death. You're a sweetheart. But like, <laughs> God damn, bro, like, I know you're vicious of, as a fighter, but like. You selling drugs? No, no but like, fucking way. Right? I know. <laughs> you're like, no way. You're a fucking dude, bitch. Nah, <laughs> stop. I would never say that. I know how hard you hit. <laughs> but like, dude, no. Nah, just like. Nah. Well, you know, back in my days when I was with my parents, it was different. You know, it's different. You, It's a different life. Right now, I think I'm like pretty soft from when I was in Mexico. I'm like pretty little really? bitch. I feel like I, I'm I'm a little bitch. Yeah. I don't feel like that at all. I don't feel I I don't see that in you myself because I I know I the way I look at you and this is not to be like rude or anything. It's like the way I look at you and it's not gonna sound rude at all. Actually, is like you're a fucking trained killer, bro. Like Thanks. that's the way I see it. So Appreciate it's like, it, man. No wonder you're so <laughs> nice to everybody. <laughs> like, you feel me? Like, yeah. So no, when I was in Mexico, I was a lot different. Like. I was living in a place where it was like ghetto as fuck. Like you would see people like de- dead people like every morning, like every really? every fucking morning you would see people died where I was used to live. And I didn't give a fuck. I was I, I would be in the street fuck playing soccer like twelve one morning, um walking around like I own the place. Like I didn't give a fuck. Um and then I came here and then you know I I didn't have to like look over my shoulders to see if anyone's following me. So I was I don't know. I guess I I'm just like comfortable now. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if I go back, I'll be like a little bitch, you know, like, oh shit, you know. I, I'm like, I mean, it's soft what you grew now. up in, though. Yeah. <clears throat> so I guess I need to go back a little bit more and get that. Stop being like a whitewash, I guess, if you want to call it that way. I mean, you can call it that. I mean, I. Living in Southern California, you can definitely get a little soft because it gets a little. You get too comfortable. Comfortable here, and it's nice, and it's like. There's beautiful women everywhere, oh, and it's my like, guys, don't even talk about bro. It's San Diego. Right <laughs> like I said, we will get to this. Like, yo, the ladies <laughs> want to know. Yeah, <laughs> dude. But like, no, I agree because it's so hot down here. The beach is here all the time. I mean, like, I'm from Northern California, and by no means is this anything like what you grew up in. By no means. Yeah. But like, I grew up around, you know, the Bay Area where there's drug dealers. There's, you know, being in these bad neighborhoods and stuff right, like this. Right, like I'm right. around these things and like when I went back to I'm in twenty fifteen I actually moved back up to the Bay Area for a year. Oh I got you. I got you. Sir. There we go. Um I got I got to go move back up there and like kind of was like walking around. Not only is the weather fucking colder, but I was like walking around and I was like Oh, I gotta like look over my shoulder again because San Diego, same thing. I'm like, oh, I don't gotta look over my shoulder no more. But like, exactly, dude, in San Francisco or going through Oakland, like you could be on the subway and somebody just walk up to you like, "What's up, bitch?" Like, <laughs> what? Like, I'm sitting here, bro. What are you talking <laughs> the about? Like, fuck? yeah, I'm chilling. Like, why you came to me? You know, type of shit. Or like, you know, just shits going down in a big city. And there's oh, like you know what? You can walk up on somebody smoking crack or shooting heroin, and it's like you know, you never know what's going on in the city up there. Yeah. But when I came back, I felt like, oh, I got my swagger back. Kind of like, for lack of a better term, like, <laughs> I was like, nah, son. Like, yo, SoCal made me soft, you know, like, <laughs> but so I kind of understand what yeah, you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally different levels, of course. But like, I remember my ex, my ex, she's a, she's a very nice girl, but she, you know, she's from Hawaii and she lived in like the kind of the countryside. Okay. So like, did not experience the type of neighborhood yeah, that I grew up yeah. in. And I remember one year she came for, uh, that year for Christmas, she came to Christmas and, um, there was 
the Cardenas, like the Cardenas, which is us. And then there was the Cardenases and they were like down the street and they were Mexican too, (laughs) but they were like just gangster. Oh shit. And so like they would get our, like our males mixed up and shit. And I was living at my grandma's house with my pops. And so like we're living there and I'm a grown ass man by this point, bro. And like these (laughs) motherfuckers would just be like doing drug deals all up at the side of the house. The Mexican mafia, the cartel, they had a house right next to ours. Like they got like, no a, way. Sh- like a shootout, like next to my grandma's house. What my dad called fuck? me. He's like, he's like, the, the cartel shot up the neighbor's house. Da, 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 da. And I was like, you get grandma out that house, you know, whatever. <laughs> so that was the next door neighbor. And then there was like the Cardenas is up here and they were like selling drugs. And I remember my ex came and I told her, I was like, Hey, after dark, like we got to be really careful around here. Like, yeah, you can't like, if you see this dude walk in, like blah, blah, blah. And dude, sure enough, we pull up and we park. And like, I just see this full, like I turn off the car and I just sat there and she like went to go out. I'm like, don't open the door, like close the fucking door. We'll just wait till he passes. Sure enough, he passed. And she's like, what is that? And I was like, that's the guy I was telling you about. Like, that's the other Cardenas, blah, blah, blah. He kind of like runs the block essentially. Like we got to just like stay the fuck away. What but, the fuck? But bro, like it was <clears throat> he, him and his homies were fucking mad sketchy. It didn't even matter. It wasn't like a Mexican thing or nothing. It was like. Mexican blacks, whites, like they had their own little crew. Yeah. But like I worked in the city and I, when I, I, I would come home probably like the, I catch like the 1130 train back. Yeah. And so I'd get to ba- I'd get back to town probably around like 1245. So deep in the East Bay. So I'd show up at the Fremont train, I'd go back up. And then so by the time I get home, it'd be like one, maybe one thirty in the morning. And dude, these fools like. 1 30 in the morning bro just on the block like i'd pull Fuck. up to my grandma's house and like there's no parking yet so like i had to like find parallel parking whatever yeah. these fools would see me get out of my car and they would like get out and like make make it seem that like they're there and just be like hey we're Jesus. like we're watching you and i'm like yeah like but you can't you can't see like you can't I can't be no pussy. Yeah. You know, like, you know, so like I'm walking, but like in the whole time I'm like, Oh fuck. I know they're fuck. looking at me, but like they're looking at me and I, I see them and they see yeah, me. Yeah, and yeah. It's like, I live on the street, bro. Like yeah. you're going to really do this right now. Like, <laughs> like why are you trying to walk in the middle of the street and flex? Right. And this right. is like a grown ass man, bro. I was like, <laughs> fuck. I want to say I was either 29 or almost 30 years old. Like still kind of scared to walk fuck? home. Like, fuck. Like, yeah. You know shit I mean? like that in Mexico as well. So it's like, yeah, it's it fucking insane. Oh God! I can only imagine in Mexico it's so much gnarlier because there's uh, like, it's, <clears throat> just well, it's different. It is different, but I think there's some places here that are like crazy as well. Like I know oh, yeah. in Chicago, it's like pretty crazy. Chicago and like New York is like crazy. Like some place in Chicago, I think it's called Cicero or Cicero, however you want to call it. I don't know. I don't even know. Um, where it's like really, really fucking like. Well, the South Side. Dangerous. They call it Chirac. Over there, like, oh yeah, super fucking gnarly. So that's 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 fucking crazy shit. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, um. Yeah. You know, there's there's stuff in Mexico as well, as well as here. So it's just it depends where you where where you go. You know what I mean? There's like nice areas in Mexico, like fucking rich areas in oh, Mexico, yeah. and there's some like ghetto, super ghetto places, super ghetto, like where I used to live, like ghetto, yeah. ghetto, ghetto, like bad. Did you ever, you know, what got you into fighting? That's what I want to know. Like, how did you like? You're this nice dude. Obviously, you're not super aggressive but like yo you get in the mat bro and you're aggressive as fuck <laughs> <laughs> okay so here's the thing like i said when i was in mexico uh i don't know i've always liked to fight just like playing around with my brother fighting stuff um i always liked that um i never thought about fighting fighting like learning like a uh, mixed martial art or anything um but when i came here my aunt um she bought a membership at a gym at alliance east lake which was like 150 or 200 dollars for for his for her daughter and son right but they're lazy as fuck the guy is a gamer nothing against gamers <laughs> but my guy is like a gamer hardcore gamer yeah and um he went for like a week and then he stopped and then my aunt was like hey you know what like it was kind of kind of expensive um do you want to finish it and i was like cool i mean i didn't like to fight but i was like cool i'll finish it and then the first two, three days I went, I was like, man, this shit sucks. Like, I don't like it. Um, and then I remember it was a Thursday. I went, and that was, like, sparring day. And then I sparred against a guy that was good. Supposedly, he was to be, he, he was supposed to be good, right? And I, I, I'm not, I don't want to say that I beat him up, but I did pretty good against him. And I liked it. I was like, oh, shit, I like to, like, get hit. You, like, throw these hands. Yeah, I was like, man, I love this. <laughs> and then I, I remember uh, my first day after sparring, 
uh, I had all these bumps on my on my on my shins because you know when when you're starting like to like kick and stuff, you get mm-hmm. bumps and like bruises and all this stuff. I remember I took the shin guard off. Man, I was like hella bumps and bruises. It was hurting. Next day I couldn't walk. But I loved out. So that's what got me into fighting. My my aunt, she was like, okay, like finish this this uh, membership, right? And I finished it. But I fell in love with the sport. So I just kept going, kept going. And then, like I said, I, I, I used to like like fighting with my brother, like just playing around. And then when I was like, okay, I don't have to fight my brother. I can fight this guy and just like get, beat him up and stuff like that. I was like, ah, right, this shit's cool, you know? Yeah. I want to do it. And then I didn't think I was going to do it as a living. I uh, like, I was just like, okay, I like to do to do this. I want to learn more about it. And then there was one t- one time my my coach uh, Juan Luis Cali at the, at the time that was my first coach ever. He was like, hey, you know what? Uh, do you want to do a fight? And I was like, cool, look, like let's do it. Um, the fight got canceled. Um, it was BKV, and I thought it was like a fucking hell of a fight. I, I thought it was like I thought it was fucking Conor McGregor. I was like, oh gee, I'm gonna fight. Yeah, you're you know? about to you're about to I'm wreck shop. Yeah, <laughs> and then it was PKV. So PKV is like when everybody's like starting, starting. You know, like mm-hmm. you can't get knock nobody out and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I didn't fight that time. Then I remember I went to work at uh, San Francisco with my uncle for the summer. And when I came back, he's like, okay, we got you a fight on um august 20th or 18th it was one of those two dates and then i was like, okay cool let's do it and then i remember my first fight i was so pumped up i was so excited i i was nervous at all I, right now i get fucking nervous when i'm gonna fight but i wasn't nervous at all right and i remember i finished the fight and i just loved it i was like oh shit i like this i mm-hmm. like this vibe you know like you're warming up people's like watching you and stuff people pace like come and watch you you have an opponent, your coach are there for you, your, your teammates and stuff. Um, I like the whole preparation, like you're, you're, you're like cutting weight and all this stuff, even though you really, you didn't really have to cut weight for PKV, but I thought it was like, oh shit. Like, I thought it was important, so I was like, okay, I need to make weight. Um, so after that fight, I was like, okay, I want I want to fight. Like, I want to I wanna actually like fight for a living. And then I never stopped. Um, I moved to uh, UFC Spring Valley. With Coach Oscar Gallegos, he he's one of uh Coach Onyx's fighters at the time, but he was my coach. Um, he was he's he's a really good coach. The only thing is that, um, he takes it to the extreme. You know, to cut weight, he would make you like he would try to make you like I don't know, like get some some shots of uh, I don't know what the I fuck it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but he was a good coach. He was the kind of coach coach that um he would wake up at four in the morning to go run with you. Like, you know, matter he would he would wake up, he would push you, he would buy your this, he would spend time with you the whole time. And I was like, Oh, this he invested crazy. in his Yeah, fighters. he was invested. And then he was like he was like pumped, you know, he was like, oh, I don't give a fuck who I'm fighting. He he was that kind of guy that didn't give a fuck about anything. Like we're fighting, all right, let's go. Um and then he introduced me to Jonix. Um I remember Jonix was you know, Jonix. Yeah. He was being Jonix. <laughs> Who's this pussy? And I was like, oh, we know. What up, coach? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? How you doing? You know? <laughs> I remember uh, the first time I met John Inks, it was because we're, we were going to spar. And I knew Jordan. Jordan uh, Huber, remember him? Jordan, Jordan, Jordan. Jordan. Jo- the other guy I- that was on my weight class. Uh, the oh, team. yes, he yes. He was yes, our yes. teammate and stuff. Yeah. Okay, that guy. I used to not like this guy. I used to be like, I fucking hate this guy. He's cocky as shit. Mm-hmm. I used to see him on PKB. And um, I remember I went the first time I met Johnix. He made me spar, and then Jordan whooped whooped my ass like bad, like really bad. He almost knocked me out. Almost mm. he know oh, he almost knocked me out, and I was pretty sad. I was like Jesus Christ, and I was talking shit about this guy. Yeah. I was like, you know what? I texted him the 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 after the sparring. I texted him. I was like, dude, you know what? I'm sorry. Like, sorry for talking shit. I under underestimate you, and um, but you're fucking good. And I'm sorry. He's like, he was pretty cool. He was like, hey, don't worry about it. Like, let's get good together. That was the last time I saw Jordan. And then I moved back to Alliance East Lake with Coach Cali. And Cali was like, you know what? I can't, I can't really take care of you. Like, as a fighter, I don't have time for that. I don't have the money to, to like go place and go fight with you. So you, you should move to with uh, Jonix. And I talked to Jonix. I, I went to spar again. By that time, that was like two years, no, like a year after. So I sparred Jordan again. And it was a whole different thing. 
he didn't knock me out, not at all. He he kicked my ass, but it was different. Like he had to fucking work for it. Yeah. And then John X and his dad, Jordan's dad, he was like, "Hey, you should you should join our team. You know, you should stay." And I was like, "Yeah, of course. That's that's actually the plan." And John X was like, "Okay, I'm gonna talk to Kali, which is my, was my coach." And um, sure, they talked to him. I joined UFC Jam Mission Valley, which is where I work right now and where I train as well. And uh, John X, he took me to the next level, man. Yeah. Since I started fighting with John X, he fixed my technique. He he took me to, like many places. He's another great fucking coach, John X. Shout out to Baby Yoda, man. He's Yo, crazy. Yo, Baby Yoda Baby said. Yoda. <laughs> um, he's a hell of a coach, man. Um, yeah. actually, my first coach, he was under John X before. He used to fight for John X. Did he really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he used to fight for John X. He he used to be one of his fighters. And, um, but yeah, going back to coach, um, since I moved with him, I never lost. Like I never lost an amateur fight. Johnny's like prepared me like really good. He, he showed me how to cut way. He fixed all my technique and all this stuff. He took me to places fucking anywhere. Like, okay, we're going to fight in fucking Sacramento. Let's go. He, he would fucking stop working for like two or three days, sometimes four days to like go with me. Um, good, really, really good coach. Yeah. So. Yeah, so basically that fight, going back to the fight, the, my first fight, that was what got me into fighting. I just loved it. Damn. You know, I fell into, I fell in love with the sport, and um, I never stopped doing it. Uh, I still do it until this day. Do you have like a, uh, I mean, it sounds like striking is your bread and butter. I, oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I just started doing jiu-jitsu about a year, a year ago. Was it a year ago? So pretty much when we met. Right when we met is when you started when doing we jujitsu. Yes, like we started off as no gi though, because you no weren't gi. even really yeah, doing it was only, gi. It was only no gi. I started doing I started doing gi when when coronavirus hit, when all the pandemic. I don't know if I should say this, but it was. It's fine. It was um, there was a gym like everything was supposed to be closed, mm-hmm. and this gym they're like, okay, no, you guys can come. Like, we're gonna keep it on the low, you know. Yeah. And we used to train with a uh, coach Miguel and coach mm-hmm. Miguel. That's when I started doing uh gi. Was that so, the one where he was like, "Go through the blue door," like, like, or something? He's like, "It's a spot." In oh down, yeah, yeah, down that South one. Bay, like, yeah, go yeah, to the yeah. blue door. I was like, "That one, exactly." Nah, I'm not <laughs> going down there to go to some yeah. fucking blue door. Yeah, so that's when I started doing key, mm-hmm. and I hated it for the first fucking month dude same i fucking hated gi when i started doing gi oh i was like God. dude are you kidding me this shit sucks no gi is way better like yes yes like, i was like i'm way better at no gi than fucking gi and i was but right now i love gi it's like i yeah. love fucking gi what's well, the technique now yeah like yeah. now i know what to grab like you know all the grips and all this stuff before yeah. i was just trying to like do wrestling like instead of grabbing the gi like holding the grip the the the, the gi yeah i would just hold the hand so it was way yeah. different. And like they a C like, grip almost. Yes. Yeah. And they, they used to like, I, I would try to like scramble out and they would grab my gear. And I was like, Jesus, like, what is this? Like, <laughs> it was crazy. It's way different. Like you can't scramble out like as fast as you can with no gi. Dude, with no gi, it's also too, cause it's, everybody's so like slippery. You can get out of so many more chokes, like yes. so easily. Yes. Just, just stating the facts. I mean, nobody, I feel like nobody wants to admit that, but it's like, dude, fucking for sure. No. Like, yeah. Of course. Like, especially for like white belts. Who do, like are just spazzing out? Like, cause I definitely spazz for sure. But like, you you're able to like squit like squ- like squiggle like yeah yeah, yeah like I'm gonna get out of that side like nah son you ain't got it but yeah. then you have to lock it in. But that's that's what makes nogi so good I think too because you have to secure the choke way gnarlier because of the fact that you're able to slip out of like chokes and stuff. But then in gi it's like, dude once they fucking once they got you it's like you're kind of fucked. Like, yeah. Oh like, fuck, no. Like, I'm fucked. Yeah, yeah. I'm so fucked right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right now, I I just like gi. It's like that's what I like to do. Yeah. I feel like no gi is a little more like boring, I guess, to me. I don't know. It's I have definitely. I mean, I haven't done no gi probably since. I don't even know. I honestly don't remember like when the last time I did no gi, but um. I don't know. I find myself now like completely opposite. Like the way I did when I was doing no gi to gi, I didn't know like the grips and shit. Yeah. Now I go to no gi and I'm like, oh, well, you can't do this fucking choke that way because there's no there's no gi anymore. Yeah, like, exactly. Fuck. Like, what do you I do? You have to figure like, it out. You like, oh Jesus, dude. I know, but you're like training with some heavy black belts now. Yeah, they're. Well, I mean, I always get my ass beat though. Like, so. I mean, I'm learning from them and stuff, but like every time I go. All the chicks are bidding me up. I'm like, yeah. Jesus, like, what am I doing here? 
I'm learning from them. I mean, it, it shows that I'm learning because when I go back to like the backyard when we, yeah. we train, like I'm like, okay, I see this. I just see all the stuff like what we do in, in, in jits and uh, alliance and all this stuff. So I see the difference. But when I roll with them, they're like competitors and stuff. So I feel like I'm not learning anything. Like I, I like I said, until I go to the backyard again with people that what I used to train, okay. which I, I still train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, well. You have to, it's with anything, bro. I mean, like I, I did martial arts growing up throughout my whole life, but like never at all to the level that you've done. Um, but it's like with skateboarding, skateboarding is what I did. That's, that was okay. my bread and butter. Right. But you, to get better, you had to skate with dudes who were so much better than you. And you were like the shittiest dude in the crew for yeah. sure, you know, kind of thing. But then eventually you either go back to your old crew or you see the homies or like, something happens and you've kind of like arrived in a sense where like, yo, Oh shit. No, like you're, you're on the level. You might be the shittiest in the group, but right. you're better than most, right. you know? And then eventually you're just going to be, you'll start growing. Exactly. And different stuff. And yeah. 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 So I'm definitely getting my ass beat every time I go with the black belts and brown blue and all this stuff. Cause they're pretty good, but I'm learning, you know, I'm learning. I feel like I've improved a lot, like a lot since I started training with them. And plus, I'm training like sometimes I go like twice a day to, uh, for jiu -jitsu. Still, yeah. So it's Damn, like, son. so it's like, I'm actually getting my work done. You know, yeah. I'm yeah. learning like every time I go, I'm learning, learning. Well, you're absorbing. You're like a sponge, right? Yeah, now. yeah. So, and I'm trying to learn because I know like my, I suck at the gr in the ground, right? Not that I suck. I know I could like scramble out and I can move and I might be able to chuck some people out, some blue belts out and stuff. But to the level where I'm at right now, I feel like. I need to work on more of my, my jiu-jitsu. Because my striking is pretty, pretty decent. I'm not going to say I'm a fucking beast in striking. But no, it's pretty decent. I mean, 15, six, uh, 14 uh, Muay Thai fights. Uh, 15, uh, 14 and all. It's like, you know. I guess I'd guess i say pretty, your striking is okay, bro. I think it's pretty okay, <laughs> <It's> you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. Dude. Every time I go into a fight, it's like striking, striking. I'm trying to strike, you know. Um, I don't want to be taken down. Yeah. Like I said on my last fight, I got taken down and got my ass handed. Pretty sad. Dude, Fuck, I mean, was it so wasn't, sad. It was, <clears throat> I mean, as a homie and watching it, it was tough to watch that first round because he was so dominating, like, on the on the top. But, like, dude, as soon as you fucking got up, that's all it needed, though. That's all it needed because <clears throat> you survived that first round. And then the next two were just, like, you were getting your fucking leg kicks and you were chopping the leg, yeah. you were chopping the leg. And it was so sick to watch. And then once he switched his fucking stance, dude, all of us, we were at your house and like, we were, Oh yeah, like, I remember that. We were just like, Oh, son, like, yeah, your fucking leg hurts. Yeah. After, <laughs> yeah. after, after the fight, uh, my brother, Luis, he faced me and he's like, Oh, everybody's here. I'm like, Oh shit. Nice. I was like, I was, I was sad. So I didn't want to talk to anybody. I was like, Hey, let me call you later. Yeah. 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 After the fight, right after the fight, before they say the, the, uh, after they say the scorecard and stuff, I was like, okay, you know what? Fuck it. My first lost. You know, it is what it is. But when I got to the, to the um, fucking room where we warm up and stuff, I started crying. I yeah. was just crying and crying and crying for a good time. And Johnny so was like, Hey, like, stop it. Like you did good. It was your first fight. We, we made some mistakes. We just got to learn from this. And plus, I wasn't fighting a guy that was fucking, he was a scrap. He was a good fucking guy. He was well-rounded. Yeah. He, fuck. Well, golden glove, he, fucking brown belt jiu-jitsu, world champion fucking, or jiu -jitsu not, and state champion fucking wrestling or something like that. Yeah, like, he's, he's uh, so for what I've heard, he's uh, number six or number 12 um, ranked on wrestling <laughs> in the state, like oh, in the state of uh, Arizona. He's a uh, brown, I think he's, right now I think he's a black belt, but. Something like that, but I know he's a brown uh, advanced uh, brown belt in jiu-jitsu, um, world champ, some shit, Spanish champ, some shit like that. Um, he's decorated. Yeah, golden. But you are champion. too, though. Just hey, hey, just do you mean like yo shit? The homie, whatever accolades, cool. Well, cool, cool. If you, if but you, I mean, you're decorated too, if though. If you see so. all the fucking things that he's at, like all these four things: golden globe champ, jiu-jitsu, wrestling, and then muay thai, and all this shit, and then you you see the other guy, skinny guy, because the guy was fucking built. He was he Yeah, was no, huge. he he definitely looked big. And then you see me, you're like, oh shit, he's a Muay Thai champ. You know what I mean? It's like, oh shit. Like he, but dude, he doesn't Muay Thai really have the ground. Bangs, though. Muay it does. Like bangs, the first man. the first not gonna lie, the first two rounds I think he wanted to <clears throat> cause 
in the interview that, that they made us before the fight, like a day before, they were like, okay, what are you, what are you going to do to this guy, right? And then when I when I watched the fight after the fight and everything, the 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 guys were saying like the guy wanted to bang with me like he's okay I'm gonna I'm gonna strike with him and stuff. First thing he did he took me down. Yeah. First fucking second. So he said, okay. I was like I right, I know that was your plan but like you're a bitch like you you said you were gonna strike but whatever. Um, or uh, I was in the ground just eating elbows. I was like by the way, by the way you know I like to smell good and stuff. <laughs> I was smelling good during the fight, you know. And when he was on top of me. He was smelling like fucking carne asada fries. I was oh, like, for my real? G, like, I'm over here smelling good for you, and you're trying to, like, <laughs> keep me with the smell, you know what I mean? I was like, I like, what the fuck? That was a f- the thing I was thinking of when he was on top of me. Are you serious? In, in the middle the f- of the fight, like, bro, you smell like carne asada fries? Like, in the middle of the fight, I was thinking, of, I was like, other than, other than eating elbows, I was like, Jesus Christ, you smell like carne asada fries. And I didn't like feel the stinky? elbows, not gonna lie, like, not stinky, but I was like, for sure you ate carne asada fries before this fight. <laughs> not stinky, like, he didn't stink, stink, you know? But I knew he ate carne asada fries, or at least fucking carne asada, you know? And then, I didn't feel the elbows, I was like, okay, I'm eating elbows, whatever. But at the moment, you don't feel them, you're like, okay, I'm just, I know I'm losing the fight. Yeah. But I didn't feel the elbows, until I, until I, after the fight, I was like, oh shit, my face is so fucked up. And I saw my face, because they put it on the camera, um, I was like, Jesus Christ, what happened to the pretty Mexican? <laughs> so that's that. Um, second round, he took me down again. So uh, the second round, he secured the fight. Third round, he was like, okay, I'm gonna strike with this guy. Yeah, you know, it out. I'm like, I'm gonna. Either way, I'm I already I'm already winning. So let's let's fucking strike. I was like, oh. so we started striking and stuff. Um, I was getting more more comfortable in the fight. Third round, too fucking late, but I was getting comfortable. That's when I started like dropping him, you know, like kicking more. And he was like wobbling and stuff. Like he he couldn't switch his stance. Then he tried to take me down again. He couldn't. He couldn't like switch his stance and all this stuff. I was like, oh shit, like I got you. And then, but it was too late. Too fucking late. He he already secured the fight. So I was like, it is what it is. You learn, you live, and you learn. So you go through this loss, your first loss from four, after 14 victories as an amateur fight. You have multiple belts, five belts, you said. You don't strike me as the person who's going to like take a loss and let this deter you from your ultimate goal of reaching the UFC. Like uh, I would imagine, you know, you took this loss and from what I saw, you only started to grow. You immediately went back to Alliance. You've been doing pro like sparring rounds and stuff from what like Chris has told me, what coaches told me. You you already up the ante. Do you feel that this kind of lit a fire under you that like you were already doing well, but now you need to do even more? You know, at first I was like, I was pretty bummed. I was like, wow, yeah. oh, man, like, you know, I think I made a mistake. I was like, I should have waited a little bit more to like turn pro. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was pretty sad. I was like, oh, maybe fighting is not for me. Like at this level, I already fucked up. Like I'm going to be losing like next fights and stuff. But... You know, little by little, I was like, like you said, I was sparring with pro pro guys, and I was like, okay, I'm not doing bad against them. Like, sorry, I'm doing like, I'm doing pretty good. Like, they're pro, and I'm 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 going at it, you know. And so that's pretty much. Plus, they're like they're they're like my family. They're like always trying to push me, trying to make me better. So I was like, you know what? I think I think I'm gonna do another another two fights. Uh, one thing I would say, um. If I lose this fight or next or two more fights, um, I will not fight anymore. I would just focus on something else. Yeah. Because that that's gonna look bad in my in my record. So I don't want to fight. I don't want to lose again. Um, so that's basically also what's pushing me. Like I don't want to lose, so I have to fucking train hard, and it's a different training. Mm-hmm. Um, in order to not lose this fight. Um, that's basically what's pushing me right now to like be a better fighter. Plus, like I said, I love fucking fighting, and I I I don't like the feeling of uh, losing. So definitely, I don't want to lose again. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one of the things that's pushing me as well. So I don't want to lose again. It doesn't feel good. Like more when like people's watching you and like all your teammates, your your coaches, they're putting all this work into you. Like everything that you, that everyone does for you to get ready for this fight, and then so you go out there and then you lose because of a stupid mistakes that you were like working on. While you were training, oh, that's kind of like, that's tough, you know? It's a hard pill to swallow. Yeah, so it's like, and not more for me, not, not, 
I feel bad for my for my coaches. Every time I lose or I do something wrong, I'm like, fuck. Like I disappoint my coaches, my manager, my everyone that that helps me out for these fights, right? So it's not so much of a oh shit I lost. Like I feel bad. No, I feel bad for them. Like they put all this work into me so I can go out there and get my ass beat. Like no, you know. So that's all. That's what's helping me for this for this fight camp. Um, because you have a fight coming up. Yes. 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 So what's the date? Next month, uh, twelfth. So February twelfth. Oh shit. Yeah. LFA again. LFA. Are you going back to South Dakota or where? No, we're, we're gonna be in Kansas this time. Kansas. Kansas. City. She. Yes, sir. Oh shit. Well, Kansas City or Kansas? Kansas. 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 My bad. The state. It's gonna be in Kansas, which which Wichita or Wichita. Wichita, Kansas. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. So. You're going out to the sticks. Yeah. Yo. So it's. I've never been there before, so definitely I'm excited yeah, me for that. <laughs> <laughs> probably for good reason, bro. I yeah. probably will never go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. The reason I think they're doing it there because they don't give a fuck about COVID. Okay. Because that was the same reason they, they did it on um, South Dakota. You did it like on a reservation, right? Yeah. So we were at South Dakota and um, we we're wearing masks. And, oh, wow. And everybody, we went to the store and stuff. Nobody was wearing a mask. They were looking at us like, what a fucking weirdos, Coach and I. And we were like, well, dude, like, what the fuck? Like, nobody cares about corona here. Because yeah, basically there's no corona in, in uh, South Dakota. So we were like the weirdos wearing the mask and stuff. And yeah, maybe you know why that is, right? GK said, "Ain't nobody going to South Dakota. Like they stay where they stay." And yeah. that's what they're like, "No, nah, son, if if Corona's here, it's cuz you brought it kind of thing." Like, we were in uh downtown through that night after the fight on Saturday. Um we went out to look for a place to eat. Dude, it's fucking crazy. It was like popping, like popping, like trucks everywhere, like fucking driving fast. Police wasn't doing anything. I was like what the fuck's going on? The People fuck? with the fucking American flag. I was like, that's right. Like, God bless America. <laughs> and then all this, all this white people, I was like, man, like, what are we doing here? Like, we don't fit in this thing. You know what I mean? Let's go back to the hotel. And then we went <laughs> back to the hotel. We didn't find anything to eat. So we went back to the hotel and we just ate whatever they had at the hotel. God damn. But it was a, definitely was a fun experience. I Dude. liked it. And I'm ready to go back again. To South Dakota? To Kansas. So oh, okay. to, just to like feel the experience of um, oh, okay. fighting and all this. Like, okay, you're in the hotel. Like, I okay, know, I like this. I, I like the feeling of, uh, okay, I'm getting, I'm, we're going to fight. You like the quarantine? Not really quarantine because we're not really quarantined. The, the, when I was fighting um, LFA in quarantine, we just were there cutting weight for the first four days where we're there. After the fight, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So where we used to go, coach and I, we went out, try to find places, go eat. You know, fun That's st- it. I guess fun stuff. If there's fun stuff to do, there it was did like. You, did you? Okay, this is gonna be a good segue into this. Real okay. Quick. Did you hop on the Tinder, or did you? Oh, and you're out in South Dakota, no, were you trying see, to get at the girls. Because this, for everybody, and I mean, this is for all the people who are listening, yeah. except for like, of course, if anybody on the team listens to this, <laughs> they obviously know on the team, of course, that I'm talking about is about your. Um, you're, you're a lover, not a... I mean, you're a lover I'm and a fighter. A lover and a fighter, yeah, And, both. and you're always talking about... Uh, dude, I, I don't remember a time where you've stepped on the mat. We've been on the mat together, but you don't talk about a girl. Yeah. Or some, <laughs> like, something that you've been doing for some new chick on Tinder or something. Yeah. Like, yo. <laughs> so here's the thing, right? Um, so I'm trying to find a girl. So if anyone, any cute girl, you know, listens to this. How, how old are you, know, Quinn Manuel? 21. You're 21. I'm 21. It's like fresh 21, too. Yeah, I, I, I turned 21 July 12th. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so you're like halfway there, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm halfway <laughs> there. Yeah. Any cute girl, just let me know. Holla. Yeah. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. Um, no, so I didn't download Tinder for, for South Dakota. I only download Tinder every time I go to uh, Chicago. Every got every time I go to Chicago with visit my cousin, yeah. that's when I download it because I don't I don't know anybody over there, so it's like okay nobody's gonna see me on Tinder. But if I download it here in fucking San Diego, I know people that might see me, and it's kind of embarrassing, you know. I mean like, yeah. Jesus, you're in fucking Tinder, like you're desperate, and I'm like, oh man, a little bit, but. <laughs> 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 so that's the reason I don't. Plus, plus, you know, I want to start getting to know people like by talking to them. You know, going on uh, yeah, like old yeah, school, old school back yeah. in my days. You want to make some friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Tinder sometimes they just want to have wanna, sex. Yeah, you know. But you're you don't have sex. No, no, that's the thing. No, you don't. I don't. And you're okay admitting that. 
Yeah, I don't I don't care. So there was okay, not gonna lie. There was this time I did had sex one time. Okay. And I regret it. You regret it? Bad. <clears throat> bad. Really bad. Like why? It wasn't bad. Like I was it was feeling good at the moment, but after I you know, I, everything happened, you know. You like felt guilty. I was like, dude, I feel God. You know, I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I like. Yeah, but you, I was going to talk to you about. Yeah, you love Jesus. Yeah, I love Jesus, and I was like, Jesus, forgive me for the my I've sinned. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I finished, laugh. and I was like, man, I fucked up. For real. Yeah. So that was the one time, one and only. And um, how right now, you, how old were you? Uh, right now, I'm 21. But back back when I was like, you know, my crazy days, I was uh, what 18, 18. Oh. Still, yeah, I guess that's a, that's a good time. That's yeah, a good time. I was yeah. 18 or 19, some, okay. something like that. Okay. And uh, actually, I met this girl on Tinder. Oh, my God. Yeah. That you was grew up in the Tinder era. Like, I guess, yeah. yeah. Tinder's been around since like you've started thinking about girls, huh? Yeah, I guess, yeah. <laughs> Damn, bro. So I did it, and I was like, man, and she, I guess I did a good job. <laughs> Because she was fucking calling me like every day. She was like, "Hey, you come over." I was like, "I was like, yeah, I'll be say there. less." Yeah, I was like, "Say less. I'll be there in a bit." I was not gonna go. She was like, "Hey, where are you?" I was like, "You know what? I got pulled over. I'm fucking sad because I got pulled over, so I'm not gonna go. Um, I think I'm gonna go back home." It was a fucking lie. I was in my bed the whole time. Um, but like literally every day, she she would like call me like, "Hey, like." You're fucking hot, and I was like, "Damn, I did a good job." Yeah, like, yeah, I know. stop, stop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you know, stop it. <laughs> and um, yeah, that was the one time. And right now, I'm just like, I'm gonna wait until like I get married. Married? Yeah, bro. Okay, my G. Yeah, I. You're putting I know it's gonna. Be, right I, now. I know it's gonna be hard, but I know there's there's ladies out there that would wait for for marriage. So here's the thing: it's respect, not that I, respect. It's respect. not that I, I can't find a girl. I just can't find the girl that, you know, that's, you know, they just want to fuck nowadays. And I'm yeah. like, no, like, I'm not, I'm not that kind of guy. I want to treat you, treat you like a queen, you know? I wanna, <laughs> I'm a fucking simp. Like, let me, let me <laughs> take you. say that. Let me take you. You always say this, oh, and like, I tell you not <laughs> to say this. Dude, dude it's, at the Christmas party, what did I say to you? I'm like, no dude, simping, dude, dog. Like, that's cra- it's hard no. like not simp. No. Like, there's so many cute girls out no, there. No, okay. Look, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. Like, listen to your G right here. You can take care of girls and you can love girls and you can show them so many nice things. Open doors for them, talk to them nice, give them flowers, take them to dinner. But that's not simping. Like, sometimes, bro, if you just got it like that and you don't have nobody in your life, you're like, yo, girl, what are you doing for dinner? You want to go out? I got you. That's not a simp. That's just like you're being a fucking man. And I, I mean, I'm sorry to anybody who's listening to that. It sounds super chauvinistic or misogynist but i'm talking to my boy right now so i'm just <laughs> saying like like nobody's listening in the room like yo my g if like i what i've noticed with the younger generation and this is just what up from what i noticed because okay. i'm 34 so i got some years on you yeah <laughs> but uh like opening doors for women like especially for women in their 20s like uh, yo my g, my g as a as like a homie Open doors for girls. Doesn't oh, matter de- what door. Definitely. Like, oh, hell every yeah. door. You get in front and you make sure you get to the front and you open the door for them. Exactly. I don't yeah. give a fuck. Like I don't like that. That's not even chivalry. That's just how I was born. I mean, I know it is chivalry, but like I like that's how I was taught. Yeah, you exactly. Always open the door for the lady. Yes. Your, your grandmother, your mother, your girlfriend, your your friend, who is a girl. Yeah. I don't care. Do that. From what I've been told, from people on the team <laughs> some of the younger <laughs> ladies they're like dude nobody our age opens the doors for us like that's not a thing like they don't treat them nice they don't like say nice things bring them flowers like yo but here's bro, the thing like, though. come on here's the thing though you're always like oh no there's no nice guys but once you find a fucking nice guy like my g like me you know what i mean yeah um they're like they like push them away but why don't you wh- okay so but this is they're this like is, what, this is my argument though to you well we had this talk last time you're a pro fighter you're a pro fighter. <laughs> like, yo, that's not like I'm a pro skateboarder. Like, no, that's still pretty gnarly. <laughs> no, but that's like, fucking crazy, too. It's, it's crazy, like but like, yo, you also, like, you take skateboarders are pro skateboarders because you don't fall. You, like, you're really good at gnarly fucking things and you roll away. You're a pro fighter. You're putting yourself in harm's way to the point where, like, you want to be touched up. Like, if you don't get touched up, fine. But you, you're going in there to be yeah. like, yo, I want to get touched up. Yeah, like, I like, want to get uh, hit in the face. Like, I want to feel this 
bang. Yeah, you know, I wanna, like, yeah, it's like I want to have one of those fights where you're like bleeding. You're like yeah. after the fight, you're like, oh shit, yeah, that was a war. hell of a fight. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I want to feel some days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, see, see that that right there. That automatically makes you not a simp. Like, yo, <laughs> right, that automatically <laughs> makes you like you like what we were talking about at the beginning of the conversation. You because you are a pro fighter, I understand why you are so nice because you understand the uh, the repercussions of what it what it is to go against you or anybody in general. Um, but that's what I'm saying is like. You have to, that's what I mean by balance. Like, find that balance, my G. Right, like, right, right, or right. Or like, yo, you walk up to that shorty, be like, yo, what's poppin', shorty? How you doing? You know, I'm, a, I'm the pretty Mexican. I'm Manuel Medina. I sound <laughs> a little cocky right now, but what's poppin'? Like, yo, I'll show you a good time, girl. What's good? And then like, you know, not actually like that, but like you, and then she sees who you are. She sees how you bang. But then when you're around her, you're just like this sweetheart. Right. You feel me? Like, but you got to let them know at the same time, like, hey, don't fuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> don't fuck with me I'm just kidding Oh no But like uh, I'm not actually saying that But getting the point across That like yo Like You're the real deal You're a G Like yo I fucking bang for a living This is what I do But when I'm with you girl Like yo It's all good no. you know, like, <laughs> It's all we'll good we get your nails done Or yeah, something yeah. You oh, feel yeah. me like Yes Yes yeah. Anything you want But that is awesome you, know, you should really just go get a pedicure though. Anything and, uh, Let me know Whatever you want babe. But no You should go with her that's what oh, I'm saying. Of course. Dude, of course. pedicures are amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't get manicures myself. but Why? Like, because I, I'm a roaster, bro. Oh. Because, like, my hands are constantly just, like, I have to wash my hands either to touch the coffee beans right, or, right. like, the oils from the coffee beans. Like, But, yo, Liav, <clears throat> Liav gave me this, like, uh, this, like, hand solve. Like, this, like, gnarly, really good hand lotion. She's like, yo, I figured you'd need this for your roaster hands. I was like... Yo, and then I've been using it right out when I get out of the shower. Bro, my hands are so proper now. Even after <laughs> washing them all day, I'm like, every time I see it, I'm like, yo, that, that kill shit. Like, like yo, <laughs> fire, son. Like, yo, hell yeah. good lotion. Like, that girls be knowing what's popping. Like, they, right, right. Yeah, they know what's up. Girls know what's good. Yo, people always asking me, like, yo, why you hang out with so many girls? I'm like, why don't you hang out with more girls? Like, yo, they can teach you, like, skin, yeah. skin, skin uh, routine. Like, my, my face is messed up. And this girl Bro. told me, like, about wow, Acrology. Right now, I don't really use it. Um, Even though I'm still paying for it, I don't use it. But <laughs> the time that I used it, it was, like, nice. I was like, damn, like, Dude, you know your stuff. The like, collagen, like, yo, collagen powder with your coffee amazing for your hair and your and your nail growth and then your skin and then you fucking you get like this revitalizing like lotion after the shower you get like <laughs> these two types of like face stuff in the shower like yo bro my yeah. skin be looking <laughs> fire shout out leah uh, shout out <laughs> leah yeah 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 um dude you gotta get it like girls know what's popping yeah well that's what i'm saying that's that's why i'm trying to find a girl that could take care of me and I could take care of her, I think you know? We're t I, think we're, I think we're thinking two different things, though, bro. Because, like, when I'm saying, like, it's cool to be homies with girls and to, to, to utilize the knowledge that they have. Yeah, But, yeah, see, you're, yeah. like, looking for, for a girl. A girl so yeah, like, I'm not looking for a girl. No, I am looking for a girl. Like, um, not desperate, but a little bit, maybe. But, okay, okay. Then let me just ask you the real question. Why? And this is not to be rude. No, no, no. Just, just, just you're fine. <laughs> okay. Why are you looking for a girl if you're not going to have sex with her? Okay, here's the thing, though. Okay. Um, I have so much love to give. Okay. So I'm like, you know, I, have, I think I'm in a good place to have a girlfriend and someone that's like serious. Um, and the girlfriend I want is like someone that I probably not stay with her. I mean, I wish. I mean, if I could, I'd stay with her for the rest of my life. I, that's it, right? Shout out to uh, no, never mind. I'm not gonna say. That. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shout uh, out to never mind. No, no, never mind. Never mind. Uh, yeah. Um, so. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to spread some love, you know. Bro, like, wait, but wait. So you're saying you want a girlfriend, but you already know that when you get with this girl, you're not gonna be with her forever. I feel Why? like in my generation, gonna, they, who are you they, gonna they, entice to be with you then? Um, like I said, I wish I would find someone that would stay with me forever. Okay. But I know at my age, I'm 21. I don't think someone that's with me is gonna stay with me forever for, for since 21. I mean, if that's the case, I would love to. I mean, bro, you're not far off. I mean, I I was with somebody for 10 years. I met him in like my, my early 20s. Nice. So oh, Jesus, yo, bro, like it. It doesn't matter when it happens. When it happens, it'll happen. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm just trying to have someone to go out with. I mean, I have friends to go out with, but it's not the same, you know. You want to boo? 
yeah, I want you a boot. Boo, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want a boot. Like, yeah. Um, so I hope she doesn't listen to this. Um, I hope she does. No, I hope she doesn't. That's the thing. <laughs> she, she's got a boyfriend. That's the thing. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Okay. Okay. So wait, 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 wait. This is another thing we need to talk about, son. Like, yo, you be picking the wrong girls, my G. No, but here's the thing. There's something that I can't t- say about her boyfriend. It's complicated. Wait, They're so like, the girl you're talking to right now? No, I'm not talking to her. I mean, I, I mean, I, this <laughs> girl that you might be having conversations with. I already tried. Has a boyfriend. Anymore. Yes. Okay. Boyfriend. A speed bump. Yeah. Okay, so if you're he, not married, it's a speed bump, bro. I don't care what so, anybody says. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this girl, uh-huh. um, not not her, but her sister invited me to church. That's my friend. That's how I met this girl, right? That's her sister. Okay. She invited me to church. And um, I went, and she was like, oh, my sister's going to go. Remember the sister I was talking about? And I was like, yeah, because she's trying to hook me up with her sister. She knows how I am. And she knows what I, what I want. And basically, her sister and I want the same thing. And um, and the, um, the minute I saw her, I was like, Jesus Christ, she's gorgeous. Like, you know you know those thoughts when you see a, a hot girl, you're like, you're hot. Like, yo, Jesus, like, yo, what's popping? I would bang, you know what I mean? <laughs> I then, bang, but I'm not banging. But, but, and then you see a girl and you're like, you could be my wife. Like, it's a different thought, you know what I mean? Bro, that, what you're talking about is lust right now, my G. That's, a, that's what that is. That's what yeah, that yeah, but I'm just saying, I, I feel you. I feel you, but like, yo, that's just. But life. that's that's what I thought when I saw. Her, I was like, okay, I would marry you. You're like gorgeous. You're like, yeah. And um, I thought everything, everything, every everything was going right with her. You know, her sister and I were talking about this girl, her sister, and everything. And um, so after church, I mean, ta- I didn't really talk to her. Nobody gave her my Instagram, but somehow <laughs> she got my Instagram. Somehow she got my Instagram. <laughs> you probably popped up in like the people you may know type of shit. Like, yo, like, but it was like right after church, like right after I left, she followed me and nobody gave her my Instagram. So I asked her sister, I was like, hey, do you give her my Instagram? She was like, oh, no. Why? She followed you? And that's how I know. That's how Quit I knew. Playing. Yo, I was they like, be talking, G. Nah. Stop. <laughs> they be talking. She's like, this is Instagram. Look at him right here. He's, in his ha- <laughs> He's half naked. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the thing. I took the, all the pictures that I have, like, well, some of them. I still have some pictures, some crazy pictures on my Instagram. But the ones that I had, like, with uh, Santa Claus, I think, no, I think that one's still there. <laughs> but there's some crazy pictures that I took off. I was like, no, nah, this is too much. You know, when I started doing the pro fighting, I was like, yeah, people's going to see this. Like, who is this fucking fighter? I love those photos. Um, during the service, she was looking at me the whole time. She was, like, eyeballing me. And I was like, yep, it's meant to be. Picking up at church. Right. <laughs> Take your ass to church. <laughs> oh, yes. Dude, stop. Oh, yes. Church, that's a place to go find a girl, Stop. for sure. And that's not why I go, but you know, part of that's the reason why I go Yo, sometimes. You know, dude, you I'm like, yeah, I will find a good Christian girl for me. But anyways, this girl, um, she followed me on Instagram. We started talking. Everything was going right, <laughs> this and that. And then we stopped talking for a little bit. She was being kind of dry, so I was like, okay, I'm, I'm not gonna push you. I asked her out like three times. Every time she had ex- an excuse. So I was like, dude, like you follow me on Instagram. You I follow me the whole time. You, you watch know? my story. You got my stories. You swiped up to my stories. I was like, what's going on? You know? So I stopped talking to her. <laughs> what was it? What's today? Tuesday, Sunday, Sunday. Yes. And I stopped talking to her for about a month. Okay. And then Sunday comes this last Sunday. And I, I told her sister, Hey, you want to go for a hike? My friend. She's like, cool. Yeah. I'll bring my sister. And I was like, I say less. Let's go. And then we were not, we were on a hike. To uh, black black mountain, some like ah oh, Jesus, I can't I can't remember like the name. Black Mountain Road or somewhere was, like uh, somewhere out there, Mission Trails or something. It was like uh, Ramona or something like that. Oh damn, you went far. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. I went far, and they took me to this place. It was like there was like water and stuff. Like you can slide on the on the rocks and stuff. And she was having so much fun. I was like, "Yo, like you're so pretty. Like you you do not know how much I like you." And <laughs> I spent the whole day with her. And it seems like she was having fun. Mm-hmm. I was kind of awkward because there was some stuff that happened during that that day. So I was kind of like down a little bit. Um, but she was having so much fun. And I feel like we clicked. Like, we, you know, yeah. even though she still has a boyfriend. Like, I know she's going to break up with him. Right? <laughs> we, we might. We might. We oh, might, you know. Gee. She's gorgeous. Like, if you see her, she's got black hair. 
Blue eyes. Let me see a photo. She, Let me see. I want to see. Don't read the username. Though. I'm not going to read the username. Just show me a photo so I can have a fo- like a picture of what you're talking about so I can see what you're seeing. Okay, I'll show you right dude, now. Dude, dude. You're good. You're good. Go okay, ahead. Okay, cool. No, yo. you're fine. I asked him to turn his phone off while we had the interview. That's fine. And he oh, asked yeah. if he could turn his <laughs> phone back on. Uh, it's totally right fine. Here. Okay, she's short. Dude, I don't she's care, short. bro. She's a girl. And then she looks way better in person. You in- you like her, right? Oh, ye- That's all that matters. Yes. Oh, you definitely do have a type, though. Okay, hold on. Let me see the picture she's tagged in. Oh, you, uh, you creep it right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I hope she's not. Oh, no, let, she's me, not let me. I don't see, want to say see. no names. I know she's cute. Oh, she's gorgeous. Okay. Um, let me see another picture. Y'all, uh, y'all, this is some 2021 shit here. 2020, I yep. am an old man right now. Like, yo, I will admit this. Like, this is, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Was, I saw a picture where she was like looking so pretty. I mean, all the time. Like, oh my god. Like, look at that. I mean, yeah, sure. <laughs> Come on, like, I like how her, her her looks black. Like blonde is cool, but black. Sits yeah, way she better. looks like a different girl in the black hair. She looks way better in black. And she's got a mole like right different. here, like right above the, the the lip. The lip. Jesus, I'm like, you're attractive. Uh, do you know who? Uh, oh my God, is her name not Cindy Lauper? Her name was a. Uh, she was like a Pepsi model. Pepsi model. Cindy, uh, Cindy, fuck, I, you're, you're not going to know. No, you're not probably know. not. I, I, sh- I don't even remember really. <laughs> probably not. Probably not. <laughs> Dude. Okay. Well, I don't know, man. I think I still like, I mean, I, I think regardless of a dating app, I think you just have to navigate those waters. You know, the 21 to like, I'd say 24 are pretty rough. If you find somebody in the in that time, you're gonna be very lucky. You're gonna be very lucky. But dude, at the same time, I'm telling you right now as a homie, she's get, gonna be the one. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Is that where you? I was. You were I was definitely not gonna go that route at all. Okay. Um, I was definitely gonna say, don't rush into things. Like, oh no, I ain't rushing. Yeah, don't rush. I'm giving her time. <laughs> And her time will come. Dude, this is like flavor of the week, though, bro. Like, next week, you'll be all right. You'll be on to something new. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like flavor of the week, bro. It's like a, it's no, a new candy, no. new she's flavor, like, new sweetness. She's been there for like three months now. Like the same. Oh, this group. is this is serious. Well, three we months. haven't been talking. I just think I like to think that she likes me, you know? <laughs> The reason that she was eyeballing me the whole time and during church, I was like, okay, yeah. Were you like low key kind of flexing like every time she looked at me? Oh no, not at all. I was just like, I was like smiling. I was like, I say bless. Like, yeah, that's you're communicating with that smile. (laughs) I I was like, I know you're watching me, but yeah. Um, Friday, I might ask her out, see what's up. On Friday? On Friday? On this coming Friday? This coming Friday? Yeah. You're gonna ask her out again on Saturday? Like Friday, I'm gonna be like, hey, you know what? I'm going to this place. I don't know, sushi, whatever. Um, on Saturday around 2 p.m., you know, want to come? You want to join me? I'll go pick you up because she doesn't have a car. Um, I'll go pick you up. That's it. And I could talk to your dad. I'll be like, what time do you want your, your daughter here? No, what? what bro? Why not? You're trying like, too much right there. See, like, what do you mean? You don't I'm trying to talk to dad. You're a grown-ass adult. You don't need to talk to nobody. Say, so, hey, it's 2 o'clock. You want to go? And then she says yes or no. See or no. But what if she says no? I could be like, oh, no, it's going to be so much fun, you know? Cause she's not but from she has here, a though. boyfriend though. Oh, uh, I'll fuck the boyfriend up. <laughs> <laughs> no, the boyfriend's cool and stuff, you know. Do you know, dude? He he trains at uh some alliance in Ramona. Ah, <sighs> he's a uh, purple. Don't don't, don't, don't say don't say yeah. say less say less say less say, say, less, less, say less. Well, that guy. You know who he is. Oh yeah. Okay. I think you've seen me before. Okay. He knows you're trying to get at his chick. <laughs> no, I don't think he knows that. I don't think he knows that because I stopped trying. Okay. I'm giving okay. her time. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to give her time. Okay. And I I hope she doesn't listen to this because she's going to know who. Well, I mean, about. does she follow your story? She's probably going to check it out. Maybe she might not listen to it, but maybe she'll still know what's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, I promoted me. she, I promoted she, you. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she'll get this far. <laughs> 
But uh, well, I mean, I hope she does because then oh, that means she's man. really interested in you. No, that would be scary. Scary. Why if I what? push her away, you know? Bro, you're all fucked up right now, my G. You're like, you <laughs> want her so bad, but then if I'm like, yo, she might like you, and you're like, nah, that's too much. No, like, like if she likes me, like, she will reply to my text, you know, sometimes. But if she doesn't, and then she plays too much. She plays games. Ah, but my G. anyways, this girl my, is going to be mine someday. Okay. Well, I'm going to marry this girl. I, I'm rooting for you, G. Thanks, appreciate it. And <laughs> her sister her sister is helping me out. Okay. So I'm pretty sure. Okay, well, Manuel, we've done an hour and a half. We always Crazy. do it. We do an hour and a half most of the time. Um, we have your fight. We covered everything. Like, is there anything that you want to say before we get out of here? Well, for those upcoming fighters, you know, just train hard. Don't give up. Like, yeah, put in the work. It, when you're doing things in half, like you're like, okay, I'm just going there because I have to, like, just to check. You know, I'm going to jujitsu, but you're not putting your 100. percent Like, no, like put in the work. Um, it'll pay off. It'll pay off. And that's what I'm doing right now, you know, putting in the work because I want to be somewhere. And I want to be someone in the UFC. I want to be known. So, yeah, for those upcoming fighters, just keep it up, put in the work, and um, ask questions all the time. Ask questions. Uh, surround yourself with people that's going to make you better. Yes. People that's going to make you better. And, you know, that's the key. Surround, your, surround yourself with people that will make you better. That's, that's basically all I want to say. Fuck yeah. I and, love and, that, man. And, and, you know, I'm still single. So <laughs> if, any, if anything pops up, follow my Instagram, you know. Say less. Say less. Say, Say less. less. Where can they find you on Instagram? Okay, it's um, at Manuel Medina MMA. MMA. Yeah. Mixed martial arts. Mixed martial arts, basically, yeah. <laughs> and then... I'm the pretty Mexican, right? There. You, I'm the only Mexican, the pretty Mexican you're going to see on that Instagram. Like, I'm hot as fuck. UFC Mission Valley. Come and take oh, yeah, classes. Oh, yeah. Come, come take some classes. Monday, <laughs> Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 5 p.m. Monday, boxing, Wednesday, Friday, uh, Wednesday, MMA. Friday, boxing again. Oh, and Sunday, 9 a.m. Sunday, 9 a.m. All right. Manuel, thank you so much, sir, for coming Thanks on. for having me. This will not be the last time you're coming on. And, dude, I think the next one, I'm already thinking about it. Like, we got to get... We'll get coach in here. We'll <laughs> oh, get like uh, we'll get crazy. like another mic. Like yo, we'll get like we'll get like a full like a full table like four people. Nice. Like, yo, we'll get it popping. I like the idea of it. I think we should just talk about you dating though. Like that's what uh, we're talking <laughs> about. <laughs> oh no, not 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 around coach. He's he's crazy, man. He's gonna give me so much shit, dude. I I'm a little scared to see what coach would actually say on the mic like oh, that. Man. Oh, he that'd be a little is scary. Crazy. He's not always PC. giving me shit about this stuff. He's like, oh, you're a fag. You're a fag. Like. You scared of pussy? And I'm like, no, dog. I just want to have sex. He's like, no, you scared of pussy. I'm like, oh my god. Okay, <laughs> dude, I love it. Oh my god, Manuel, thank you so much, sir. Thanks for having me, brother. Dude, good luck on your fight, and I definitely we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll link up again after your next fight. Sounds great. Thank All you right. so much. Peace. Deuces. Yes, thank you so much, Manuel. That was a very very funny conversation. I loved it. It was amazing. You guys need to be on the lookout for him because he is about to cause some damage. I'm telling you, my boy is going to kill it. Be on the lookout. Manuel, thanks again, G. And thank you to all of you amazing people around the world who continue to support Caffeine and Green and show mad love. I see y'all. I appreciate every single one of you. And lastly, guys, if you haven't already, head over to www.caffeineandgreenroasting.com today. Check out that Southside coffee from my homegirl, Tyler Schaefer. The new Victory Lap coffee inspired by Leof Clockley. And last but not least, the OG is a blend. Dark, chocolate, and bold. It's amazing. Head over to caffeineandgreenroasting.com today and get that coffee. And lastly, guys, please be safe out there. Wear your mask. Do you, you know, wash your hands. Do whatever you need to do. Take care of the people that you that you love and just tell them you love them. Take care of yourself, all right? I will see y'all next week. Peace. <laughs>